Good afternoon, this is Dr. Bonsai, Dr. Bonsai's Beam Emporium. Just doing a quick follow-up uh, on the Steve Jackson uh, Ogre Miniature Set 4. And I want to go over what we're, what we're seeing and uh, just kind of offer comparison. So obviously there's a lot of stylistic differences uh, on the individual miniatures. Um, so here is what they call a GEV or a ground effect vehicle, which is basically like a hovercraft. Uh, so this is the pan-European one, uh, or the uh, North American Combine one, and then the blue one is the pan-Euro. So basically, stat-wise, these things are identical. Um, this one was two pieces, the, the stack and the, the engine stack, and then this one was the fins, the body, and that little bitty turret that's less than a millimeter long that was a separate piece and that's going to be a recurring theme with this so uh that that affects kind of my ability to recommend this set uh this is kind of unique to the set i don't have the uh, uh pan euro one which is a light tank basically it's a it's a baby tank that barrel is separate the treads are two separate pieces again kind of the common theme is that these miniatures are slightly more detailed but the amount of detail you're getting at the cost of being a complete pain in the ass to build is not worth it in my opinion uh, a good example of like this this is this is a howitzer uh it's neat because it's nice solid friction fit it's not going any place i had to glue this down because this was uh, the cannon part was a separate piece. The kind of the, the, the base was a separate piece. And this, I had to lock that in with glue because it, uh, it was like just loose. It just would not stay no friction fit whatsoever. So, um, the infantry, um, this dude, common theme with this dude is you can kind of see that white stress point is how it's, you know, extremely bad for that thing being on the sprue i have so many of these that are just bent so that i had to kind of like straighten out and then uh use a little bit of liquid plastic glue to to get those on and again the 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 tricky thing with these is that they do the whole like clips in the bottom of the miniature so that you can like pop them on and off the base don't don't do that just don't don't do that uh because the issue gets to be is that they will literally fly off. So I actually experimented with it. So these guys are locked in with, with plastic glue. So there's your pan Euro guys versus your, uh, versus your North American combine guys. Uh, again, agonizing. <laughs> I think that's probably just because I have these big, you know, I have these big paws, but it was really super difficult and not fun for me to, try to build these um with a few exceptions the the missile tracks are kind of okay uh this is a little bit more detailed uh it's a little cooler looking more angular the tracks are separate again common theme separate tracks versus the the pan uh pan euro version and then same thing so you kind of get this more like the north american stuff is more rounded and the the pan euro stuff is more 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 uh, more square blocky. So, so here's the tracks for the pan Euro stuff. And here are the tracks for the North American combine being separate. And it's like, why did these, why did these have to be separate pieces? They, it's certainly not a mold draft issue. I'm pretty sure you can, you can achieve those half, those half circles without it. So I don't know. It's just weird. Um, this is a light GEV, uh, so this is like a one-man thing. Uh, this part was separate. Again, not sure why. Uh, probably didn't need it to be that way, but there you go. Um, you have the mobile howitzer. Again, I had to lock the turret in uh, with glue because it would just pop off. It's not that... It wouldn't fit it would fit and it would lock in but like the second you touch it it would just go poof, it would just pop pop off uh for uh like it's spring loaded which 
would probably be fun for a game, but not if you're just trying to like handle it and or like paint it or anything. So, and uh, mostly since the the turret facing doesn't really matter in this game, I've locked it in with glue. This is a super heavy tank. Again, I don't have the uh, the Pan Euro version, but it's basically like a big big two gun tank destroyer. Which, if you're a BattleTech fan, this would service pr pretty well for a demolisher. Oh, before I go go further on that way, uh, hover truck again, same kind of concept with the infantry bases. Is you kind of have this this clip system, and again, I just locked it in with glue because the, the second you touch them after you you clip them in, they would just bounce right off. It was really quite hilarious. Um, and then you get the Pan Euro uh, Doppel Soldner. Uh, this one is basically, it's literally a land battleship. Um, this one came with a set of spare tracks because the, the tracks that came with it on the sprue were not, uh, didn't fit, actually, shockingly. So uh, they had to, like, make a mold that they threw into this Kickstarter to, to, to rectify the issue with this one. Um, it's fine. It's well detailed. It's got a lot of guns. Again, the the... You could probably get away just by f with friction, but uh, the t the front turret here has the other issue, same issue as the other vehicles, which is that they would just pop off, and I don't understand why. That that I I, just, I don't understand understand why that would be an issue, considering that these were made by the same people for the same same reason, same game. So uh, I don't know why. That would be the issue. And then you have your different, uh, your different ogres. And I did do some research on the naming convention. Apparently for pan European ogres, they're called uh, something different, but they're still like the basic ogres. They just change the names. So you have this ogre mark one, which is a little, little guy, um, slightly more detailed. This one I can I can see the justification for multiple parts, but you know it's fine. It's fine. This is not a turret. Shockingly, could have been a turret. Don't know why it's not. Um, again, same thing. This looks like it should be a turret. Looks like it could be a turret. It is not. Uh, these are the secondary guns, and it's it is what it is. And this is the the Mark III and the Mark uh, uh, Mark III and the Mark V. Uh, from the original Ogre's Miniatures 1 set. And then this is the Mark VI. As you can see, it's more gooder because it's got three gun blisters, uh, three internal missile racks, six external missile racks, a bunch of bunch more just stuff kind of tacked on to it. And um, it's fine. Builds up fine. It's funny. The, the big stuff that you think would cause the issue was fine. It was not a problem. It was just not an issue. The, the little stuff, though, I I did not have a good time. <laughs> it was not good vibes uh, building this stuff. So I, I, I'm afraid that I can recommend it, especially if you just want some cheap vehicle, like a cheap horde of vehicles for your Battletech games. It's, this is fine. But at the same time, embrace the suck. I will... <laughs> You know, embrace the suck. I will say that. But other than that, that's all I got. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.